Returning to Cambodia, I just want to say a few things about what I call in my book norm penetration gone wrong. And that's basically the idea that a mixed tribunal could somehow bring Western notions of justice and rule of law into a setting like Cambodia and make it all right. And I think the opposite happened where corrupted, uh, where the, the, the tribunal was corrupted as a, as a process of being mixed. Uh, here uh, from uh, earlier uh, Tool Slang, the director of Tool Slang, Doik, uh, who confessed uh, in 2009 at the tribunal for his activities, was found guilty in 2011 in causing the deaths of at least 12,273 people. Uh, he was sentenced to 35 years uh, initially, reduced to 19 for time already served. Uh, he wasn't happy with that. He appealed. And of course, he lost uh, because the prosecution also appealed and got him life in prison. Now, when one compares that experience to uh, this gentleman's here, Bernie Madoff, who uh, was sentenced to 150 years in prison, uh, one has to wonder. He didn't kill anyone. He did cause $65 billion in fraud. Uh, now, maybe more like $14 billion in actual money lost. But uh, he's not appealing. Or you could look at this uh, Cleveland kidnapper of three women uh, who was uh, sentenced to... Uh, Life plus a thousand years. Uh, that's uh, American drama for you. He said, I'm not a monster, and after that he killed himself. But one has to wonder who is the real monster in all this and whether one can even characterize that. Now, the judge in the Bernie Madoff case, Denny Chin, said that he could have given uh, Madoff 20 or 25 years because it would have effectively been a life sentence, but he reasoned that the symbolism of the longer term was important given the enormity of the crimes. Now, mind you, that is the Ponzi scheme made off. You compare that, of course, to uh, Ian Tirat, who was the social affairs minister under the Khmer Rouge. Uh, she actually had something to do with my own father's passing because she, ran, she would have run the hospital in which he last was, had a chance to perhaps survive. Uh, and uh, she was released due to Alzheimer's. Her husband, the minister of foreign affairs, Ian Suri, uh, dead at age 87 on March 14th of 2013, never in effect found guilty under the ECCC and therefore uh, not guilty as a result. Uh, now, the two cases that did find their way through, uh, that of Kusampan and Nunchir, found guilty last year of crimes against humanity, still waiting for another trial for genocide. Now, one has to wonder with this variation on justice and, and sort of the principles that my own late mother would have lived by, a woman who saved her own life, the life of five children and 15 more grandkids, now actually 16, and what she thought. She believed that what goes around comes around and that the people who had caused so much strife in our life would have probably met their own fates. She was Buddhist and believed, I think, in karmic justice so that, in effect, if she didn't find justice in this life, the folks who had committed so many crimes would maybe be reborn cockroaches in the next. And perhaps this gave her the ability to forgive the fact that there wasn't justice. I mean, that justice wasn't going to be delivered. She passed away before any of these verdicts were rendered. And I would say that perhaps for the 15 million Cambodians now in, in living in Cambodia, many of whom underwent the period of the Khmer Rouge and some of whom still suffer from that, that in effect the, uh, the, the, their belief system allows them, I think, to cope with the lack of justice still to this date and, uh, and that they are able to go on with their lives as a result. Anyhow, just a few ideas to share with you.